The key to understanding lumbar spine MRI is to understand the nerves and the nerve tissue and the overall architecture of that nerve tissue. The goal for 90% of these studies is really to evaluate for mass effect or impingement upon nerves as cause for back pain. So in order to do that, you have to understand the anatomy of those nerves. All right. Nerves are really going to be in one of two places on a lumbar spine MRI. I'm going to focus on these axial images. They're either going to be in this region called the central canal, or they're going to be in the region just lateral to the central canal, known as the neural canal. This is the left neural canal. Here's the right neural canal. So in the central canal, let's focus on the central canal to start. In the central canal, we're going to have a portion of the spinal cord. This is the spinal cord here. As we go lower, or caudally, we're going to see that spinal cord terminate, and we're going to get these nice, beautiful little rows of nerve roots floating in this white CSF. As I keep scrolling down, if you focus on this central canal, you'll see that these nerve roots organize. These nerve roots go off in groups of two and go out laterally to form spinal nerves at each level. As I keep coming further and further down, you see that we start to run out of nerve roots, and we get to the point at the sacrum, you can see I'm at the sacral level here, and we're basically running out of nerve roots, and everything is turning into a peripheral nerve, which are these dark structures in the neural canals. You can see how mathematically organized this branching is. You can see as I come back up, you can just notice how everything goes off orderly in groups of twos. Uh, these two nerve roots right here are going to combine here, and then form this dark signal structure known as a spinal nerve. I'm here at the L4, L5 level, and I'm going to talk about how do we name these nerves. There's a standard convention for naming these nerves. So I'm at the L4, L5 level. I want to find the spinal nerve that's exiting at that level, and you'll notice that if I come out here on the sagittal, you can see that the nerve, which right here what I'm pointing to is a nerve, the nerve ex actually exits slightly above the disc level. So since I'm at the disc level here, I need to come up slightly in order to see the nerve. So here's my nerve. This is the left uh, spinal nerve here in the neural canal. So what name does this nerve have? Well, if I'm at L4, L5, the nerve that's exiting at L4, L5 is going to be L4. That's just a standard convention. So I know for a fact that this nerve that I'm pointing to right here is the left L4 nerve. You can see that within the central canal, there are two little nerve roots right here that are actually going to be descending, going lower to exit at the next level. So if this is L4, then these two nerves, these two nerve roots, in fact, are going to be called the L5 descending nerve roots. And they're going to be in what's called the lateral recess of the central canal, the lateral portion of this central canal. If you can memorize L4, L5 level, that L4 is exiting and L5 is descending, you can pretty much understand any level in the lumbar spine. It takes a few times to kind of have that sink in, but once it does, you usually don't forget it. So now that we understand the nerve architecture and anatomy, then we can quickly go through the rest of the anatomy because all we're looking for now is structures that could possibly impinge on these nerves, either the centrally located nerve roots or the peripherally located uh, spinal nerves. So the major culprit here is really going to be this disc, which is right here. You can see this intervertebral disc. I'm cutting right through it. The disc, of course, can bulge over time. If it bulges centrally, it's going to affect the centrally located nerve roots. If it bulges more laterally, it's going to affect that exiting nerve. So those are things that I like to document on these lumbar spine MRIs. As I move posteriorly here, you can see there's these two joints on either side of the spine. These are the facet joints. And just like any other joint in the body, they have cartilage, and that cartilage can degenerate over time. As the cartilage degenerates, these joints become more bulky and osteophytic and start to crowd out surrounding structures. If they crowd more medially, they're going to cause central canal stenosis and symptomatology. If they crowd out more anteriorly and laterally, they're going to crowd out the neural canals, and they're going to affect the exiting nerves. The last structure, which uh, can affect the central canal, is going to be this ligamentum flavum, which you can barely see here. As the discs lose volume, uh, these ligaments, the ligament is basically right here on the sagittal. As the disc loses volume, that ligament can become redundant and start to bulge out into the central canal. So we like to call that ligamentum flavum uh, buckling or thickening or hypertrophy, and that's a cause for central canal narrowing or stenosis, and that can affect the centrally located nerve roots.
So I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. That's a good introduction to nerve anatomy and architecture on lumbar spine MRI, focusing on the axial anatomy. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and click like below. Of course, subscribe if you'd like to see additional content. To all my listeners out there, all my haters out there, God bless you. Sarogo RMD. Thanks for watching. I've got to go.